The Battle of Cre Acute Cy, also called Battle of Cressy, was an important English victory during the Edwardian phase of the Hundred Years' War. Coupled with the later battles of Poitiers and Agincourt, it formed the first of three decisive English successes during the conflict. The battle was fought on 26 August 1346 near Cre Acute Cy, in northern France. An army of English, Welsh and Allied troops from the Holy Roman Empire led by Edward III of England engaged and defeated a much larger army of French, Genoza and Majorcan troops led by Philip VI of France. Emboldened by the lessons of tactical flexibility and utilization of terrain learned from the earlier Saxons, Vikings and the recent battles with the Scots, the English army, despite being heavily outnumbered by the French, won a decisive victory. The battle saw the rise in power of the longbow as the dominant Western European battlefield weapon, whose effects were devastating when used en masse. The combined arms approach of the English, the new weapons and tactics used, which was far more focused on the infantry than previous battles in the Middle Ages and the killing of incapacitated knights by peasantry after the battle has led to the engagement being described as the beginning of the end of chivalry. The battle crippled the French army's ability to come to the aid of Calais, which fell to the English the following year. Calais would remain under English rule for over two centuries, falling in 1558. Campaign background A French court, however, decreed that the closest relative of Charles was his first cousin, Philip, Count of Valois. Philip was crowned as Philip VI of France. Reluctantly, Edward paid homage to Philip in his role as the Duke of Aquitaine, which he had inherited in 1329. Populated by Gascons with a culture and language separate from the French, the inhabitants of Aquitaine preferred their relationship with the English crown. However, France continued to interfere in the affairs of the Gascons in matters both of law and war. Philip confiscated the lands of Aquitaine in 1337, precipitating war between England and France. Edward declared himself King of France in 1340, and set about unseating his rival from the French throne. An early naval victory at Sluz in 1340 annihilated the French naval forces, giving the English domination at sea. Edward first invaded France with 12,000 men through the Low Countries, plundering the countryside. After an aborted siege on Cambrai, Edward led his army on a destructive chevauté through Picardy, destroying hundreds of villages all the while shadowed by the French. Battle was given by neither side and Edward withdrew, bringing the campaign to an abrupt end. Edward returned to England to raise more funds for a future campaign and to secure political difficulties with the Scots, who were at the time fighting for their independence. On the 11th of July 1346, Edward set sail from Portsmouth with a fleet of 750 ships and an army of 15,000 men. With the army was Edward's 16-year-old son, Edward of Woodstock, a large contingent of Welsh soldiers and allied knights and mercenaries from the Holy Roman Empire. The army landed at St. Vaast La Hogue, 20 miles from Cherbourg. The intention was to undertake a massive chevauté across Normandy, plundering its wealth and severely weakening the prestige of the French crown. Carrington, St. Lo and Torteval were all raised, after which Edward turned his army against Conn, the ancestral capital of Normandy. The English army sacked Conn on 26 July, plundering the city's huge wealth. Moving off on 1 August, the army marched south to the River Seine, possibly intending to attack Paris. The English army crossed the Seine at Possy, however it was now between both the Seine and the Somme rivers. Philip moved off with his army, attempting to trap and destroy the English force. Attempting to ford the Somme proved difficult, all bridges were either heavily guarded or burned. Edward vainly attempted to probe the crossings at Hangis-sur-Somme and Pont-Remy before moving north. 
Despite some close encounters, the pursuing French army was unable to bring to bear against the English. Edward was informed of a tiny ford on the Somme, likely well defended, near the village of Seinville called Blanchetarque. On 24 August, Edward and his army successfully forced a crossing at Blanchetarque with few casualties. Such was the French confidence that Edward would not ford the Somme, the area beyond had not been denuded, allowing Edward's army to resupply and plunder, no yells sur mer and la Crotoy were burned. Edward used the respite to prepare a defensive position at CRE acute CYN Pontu while waiting for Philip to bring up his army. The position offered protection on the flanks by the river May to the west, and the town of Wadercourt to the east, as well as a natural slope, putting cavalry at a disadvantage. Battle. Preparation Edward deployed his army facing south on a sloping hillside at CRE acute CYN Pontu, the slope putting the French mounted knights at an immediate disadvantage. The left flank was anchored against Wadercourt, while the right was protected by CRE acute CY itself and the river may beyond. This made it impossible for the French army to outflank them. The army was also well fed and rested, putting them at an advantage over the French, who did not rest before the battle. The English army The English army was led by Edward III primarily comprising English and Welsh troops along with allied Breton and German mercenaries. The exact size and composition of the English force is not accurately known. Andrew Ayton suggests a figure of around 2,500 men at arms, nobles and knights, heavily armoured and armed men, accompanied by their retinues. The army contained around 5,000 longbowmen, 3,000 hobellers and approximately 3,500 spearmen. Clifford Rogers suggests 2,500 men-at-arms, 7,000 longbowmen, 3,250 hobellers and 2,300 spearmen. Jonathan Sumption believes the force was somewhat smaller, based on calculations of the carrying capacity of the transport fleet that was assembled to ferry the army to the continent. Based on this, he has put his estimate at around 7,000 minus 10,000. The power of Edward's army at CRE acute CY lay in the mass use of the longbow, a powerful tall bow made primarily of yew. Upon Edward's accession in 1327, he had inherited a kingdom beset with two zones of conflict, Aquitaine and Scotland. England had not been a dominant military force in Europe, the French dominated in Aquitaine, and Scotland had all but achieved its independence since the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314. Previously, medieval battles had largely been decided by the charge of heavily armoured mounted knights counted effectively by the Scots infantry at battles such as Stirling Bridge and Bannockburn. Longbows had been effectively used before by English armies. Edward I successfully used longbowmen to break up static Scottish Chiltern formations at the Battle of Falkirk in 1298. However, it was not until Edward III's reign that they were accorded greater significance in English military doctrine. Edward realized the importance of inflicting severe damage upon an enemy force before melee combat began. At Halladon Hill in 1333, he used mass longbowmen and favorable terrain to inflict a significant defeat on the Scots forces. In some ways a harbinger of his similar tactics at CRE acute CY. A second important advantage of longbowmen was cost, they were far cheaper to equip and train than an aristocratic knight, to ensure he had a force of experienced archers to call upon. Edward ingrained archery into English culture, encouraging it to be practiced and producing stocks of arrows and bows in peacetime as well as war. He later declared in 1363 that archery had to be practiced by law, banning other sports to accommodate archery instead. A common claim of the longbow was its ability to penetrate plate armor due to its straw weight, a claim contested by contemporary accounts in modern tests. 
a controlled test conducted by Mike Lodes at the Royal Military College of Sciences Ballistics Test Site for the program weapons that made Britain. The longbow found that arrows shot with a force of 150 pounds with a terminal velocity of around 52 meters per second against a plate of munition quality steel were ineffective at a range of around 80 meters enough to mildly bruise, wound the target at 30 meters, and lethal at a range of 20 meters. Archery was described as ineffective against plate armor by contemporaries at battles such as Bergerac in 1345, Neville's Cross in 1346 and Poitiers in 1356. Later studies also found that late-period plate armor such as that employed by Italian city-state mercenary companies was effective at stopping contemporary arrows. Forces, however, were almost wholly unprotected against arrows, and arrows could penetrate the lighter armor on limbs. Clifford Rogers, commenting on the later, similar Battle of Agincourt, argues that the psychological effect of enduring a massive storm of arrows would have broken the fighting spirit of the target forces. Archers were issued with around 60 to 72 arrows before a battle began. Most archers would not shoot at the maximum rate, around 6 per minute for the heaviest bows. As the psychological and physical exertion of battle strained the men, as the battle wore on, the arm and shoulder muscles would tire from exertion. The fingers holding the bowstring would strain and the stress of combat would slacken the rate of fire. The French army The French army was led by Philip VI and the blind John of Bohemia. The exact size of the French army is less certain as the financial records from the CRE acute CY campaign are lost. However there is a prevailing consensus that it was substantially larger than the English. The French army likely numbered around 30,000 men. Contemporary chronicler Jean Froissart places the French numbers at 100,000, while Winkley suggests 80,000. These numbers have been described as unrealistic and exaggerated by historians, going by the extant war treasury records for 1340. Six years before the battle, Aiton suggests a number of around 12,000 mounted men at arms as the core soldiery of the French army. Several thousand genos across Bowman and a large, though indeterminate number of common infantry. Most historians on the battle have accepted the figure of 6,000 genos across Bowman. However, Schnurb questions this figure as unlikely, based on the estimates of the number of available crossbowmen in all of France in 1340, which numbered 2,000. That Genoa on its own could have put several thousand mercenary crossbowmen at the disposal of the French monarch is described by Schnurb as doubtful. The contingent of common infantrymen is not known with any certainty, except that it outnumbered the English and was in the thousands. Technology comparison The Battle of CRE Acute CY is often exemplified as a battle in which the longbow defeated the rival crossbow. The crossbow had become the dominant ranged infantry weapon on the continental European battlefield, the choice weapon for expert mercenary companies. The crossbow was favored as it required less physical strength to load and shoot than a longbow, and could release more kinetic energy than its rival, making them deadlier at close range. They were, however, hampered by slower, more difficult load times, their cumbersome shape and their range, of which the longbow had the advantage. Later developments in more powerful crossbows in the 15th century, such as the windlass span crossbow negated these advantages. While advances in bow technology brought to Europe from armies on crusade introduced composite technology, decreasing the size of the crossbow while increasing its power. A common exaggeration of the crossbow is its reload time of one bolt every one to two minutes. A test conducted by Mike Lodes for weapons that changed Britain, the longbow found that a belt and claw span crossbow could discharge four bolts in 30 seconds while a longbow could shoot nine. A second speed test conducted using a hand-span crossbow found that the weapon could shoot six bolts in the same time it took for a longbow to shoot. 
10. Initial deployments The English army was deployed in three divisions, or battles. Edward's son, Edward, the Prince of Wales commanded the vanguard with John de Vere, the Earl of Oxford, Thomas de Beecham, the Earl of Warwick and Sir John Chandos. This division lay forward from the rest of the army and would bear the brunt of the French assault. Edward himself commanded the division behind, while the rear division was led by William de Buen, Earl of Northampton. Each division composed of spearmen in the rear, men-at-arms in the centre and the longbowmen arrayed in front of the army in a jagged line. The exact location of the English baggage train is not known. Edward ordered his men-at-arms to fight on foot rather than stay mounted. The English also dug a series of ditches, pits and caltrops to maim the French cavalry. The French army came north from Abbeville, the advance guard of his army arriving at the CRE acute CY ridgeline at around midday on 26 August. After reconnoitering the English position, it was advised to Philip that the army should encamp and give battle the following day. Philip met stiff resistance from his senior nobles and was thus forced to concede that the attack would be made that day. This put them at a significant disadvantage. The English army was well fed after plundering the countryside and well rested, having slept in their positions the night before the battle. The French were further hampered by the absence of their constable. It was the duty of the constable of France to lead its armies in battle, however, the constable Raoul II of Brienne, Count of Eu had been taken prisoner when the English army sacked Con, depriving them of his leadership. Philip formed up his army for battle. The Genoza under Antonio Doria and Carlo Grimaldi formed the vanguard followed by a division of knights and men-at-arms led by Charles II, Count of Alonson accompanied by the blind King John of Bohemia. The next division was led by Rudolf, Duke of Lorraine and Louis II, Count of Blois, while Philip himself commanded the rearguard. The French attacked the French army moved forward late in the afternoon, around 4 p.m. after it had formed up. As it advanced, a sudden rainstorm broke over the field of battle. The English archers destrung their bows to avoid the strings becoming damaged. The Genoza with their crossbows could take no such precautions, resulting in damage to their weapons. The crossbowmen began their advance, however they had left their pavises back in the baggage train, and thus had no means of protection as they loaded their weapons. The Genoza moved within range and discharged their weapons. Damaged by the rain, the slack and crossbows had little effect on the English line. The English archers shot their bows in retaliation, inflicting heavy casualties on the Genoza, causing them to retreat. The knights and nobles following in Alenkin's division, seeing the routed mercenaries, hacked them down as they retreated. Froissart writes of the event. The English, who were drawn up in three divisions and seated on the ground, on seeing their enemies advance, arose boldly and fell into their ranks. You must know that these kings, earls, barons, and lords of France did not advance in any regular order. There were about 15,000 genos across bowmen, but they were quite fatigued, having marched on foot that day six leagues, completely armed, and with their wet crossbows. They told the constable that they were not in a fit condition to do any great things that day in battle. The Count of Alonson, hearing this, was reported to say, This is what one gets by employing such scoundrels, who fail when there is any need for them. Chateaubriand, after Frosset's middle French, gives, On shade do it be an charge de tel ribo di qui fi o besoen, the clash of the retreating Genoza and the advancing French cavalry threw the army into disarray. The long bowmen continued to discharge their bows into the chaos, while five ribaldish early cannon added to the confusion, though it is doubtful that they had inflicted any significant casualties. Froissart writes that such guns fired two or three discharges on the Genoza, likely large arrows or primitive grape shot. Giovanni Villani writes of the guns. The English guns cast iron balls by means of fire, they made a noise like thunder and caused much loss in men and horses. The Genoza were continually hit by the archers and the gunners. 
By the end of the battle, the whole plain was covered by men struck down by arrows and cannonballs. With the Genosa neutralized, the French cavalry charged the English ranks. However, the slope and obstacles laid by the English disrupted the charge. The continued hail of longbow arrows inflicted mounting losses upon the knights, blocking successive waves of advance by the following ranks. The massed ranks could not break the English position, which subjected them to a relentless barrage of arrows, making many of the horses casualties. The French cavalry made repeated attempts to charge up the slope, however with each successive wave more losses were sustained. In the course of the battle, the blind King John of Bohemia was struck down attacking the Black Prince's position. The struggle continued well into the night when Philip abandoned the field of battle. Philip had his horse killed from underneath him twice during the battle and may have taken an arrow to the jaw. His sacred and royal banner, the Oriflamme, which when raised meant that no quarter was to be given to the enemy, was also captured and taken. One of the five occasions this occurred during the banner's century-spanning history. The battle ended soon after the French king fled, the remaining men-at-arms running from the battle.